Welcome back to Design 380. Uh, here's our start file. Or love volume two, figure 55A1. What not to do. Talked previously about this. Uh, obviously, when we pull this, we're going to post uh, in, in the diagram to the right. It's going to be putting extremely high stresses right in the wrong spot, right at the top of the thread. This is bad, bad, bad. So he gives us various other options which work better. Uh, including number six here, which we're going to do. This is a little more complicated. Uh, previous years we used the number five, which is easier to model. However, we've been doing good work with this uh, uh, tapering this year. So we're going to go ahead and use that uh, approach this time. So we'll do number six. There are some small problems here. Uh, the tape, the beginning of the taper is, looks like it's aligned with the top, which is not ideal. We're going to make sure it's slightly below and down here at the bottom we're going to make sure that we have the taper protruding through. Same as our rule set from last couple of weeks ago. I'm going to use this this nut to uh, drive the design on the whole. So first, no history. Let's get rid of some stuff uh, that's going to just get in the way here. This threading is painful. It's also half threaded on this plate. And got a chamfer here. And so when we're going to be deleting these threads away, we need some things which are going to define the new shape. Those two faces are what we're going to not pick. Uh, we're going to actually delete enough to empty out this half threaded side of the plate. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, selecting to the right, everything AO and compass. Now hold on, let's get an all body filter the selection. Select all toggles off, get just the body faces, click away. Nice. 117 faces selected. Don't forget to unselect the base, otherwise it won't know where to end the cut or end the delete, and then it'll just fail. It won't crash, but it just won't do it for you. Delete. Nice. Let's check everything. This looks okay. You can use the inspect for that. Uh, show snap points works well. So then you can pick, like for example, where something is. If I can't get through this part, so hold down control. You know, keep the face selected. You can see it's nicely on the origin. Nice. There it is. Perfect. What about this guy? Ooh, strange. It's obviously. Maybe not. Obviously, this is the old major diameter. Let's resize that. Press pull. Right now it's 9.925. Let's call it 10. Make sure it worked. 10 to... Nice. We are set to go. Let's turn on history. Right click somewhere up in here at the top level. Capture design history. Nice. Does its usual thing. Here we are. Close that guy down. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a bit of a cold. Now we'll notice that we've lost the hole which we wanted in the plate, so let's just hide the plate. We'll do some good work in here. We'll use the post to drive the shape of the plate. That's my uh, proposal. If I press Shift N, it also shows me some coloring. It's kind of more pleasant. And I'm actually going to work in the post this time. Radio button on the post. If you want, isolate. The plate's already hidden. It won't make any difference. Perfect. Um, probably going to be looking for some uh, section analysis. Let's use the ZX again. So I'll just turn that off and on. Nice. Won't do anything to the on isolate. Won't do anything to the plate, of course, because it's already sliced. But could come in handy from time to time. Let's isolate the post again and make it active. Let's put a sketch in here, and we'll use the posts. 
So not that it's, again, not a big deal here, but we're gonna use the origin in the post component. And I'm gonna use the ZX again, or XZ, this is Paragon. Again, you can slice this, but we've already got it sliced. So it depends how you wanna run it. It does manage this a little bit for you. So if you slice and then toggle it on and off, it'll turn this one off. Anyway, keep in mind the top of the plate is on the origin. That's the origin in our part. Want to make my sketch as efficient as possible. I'm gonna try and draw one sketch that follows this profile. All the way down. So that's the plan. Let's have a look here. So we want it to be slightly below the edge of the plate. Let's try for that. There's nothing to sketch from right now though. We need to project. So project, what does that do? If we project this edge, let's have a look what we get. Oh, it gives us lines at the top and bottom. That's not what I want. What I want instead is an intersect of that same face. Say okay, gives me edges, nice. So if I hide the bodies, I can see what I would like to see, nice. So it comes down. Now let's try drawing from there. I'll let's drag, click and drag. Oh, shit, it just pulls out. Gives me a perpendicular. It's not what I want. Oh, my, let's see undo instead. Another way to do this is start out with a circle. Just drag. And if you're careful, you can get a little tangency there. Get that escape. Oh, what's going on? I can't pick, ah, uh, right. Filter, oh, thank you. Now I can do, no. <laughs> No, I can't. So just trying to get it kind of about the same size as the demo. Not, it looks like the center's outboard of the corners. And that's gonna put a corner right about there. Let's try that. Try to get it about the right size. Snap it on. Don't want it vertical, so not there, but yeah, about there. Perpendicular to the projected line, that's okay. And making our shapes. I want this to be our rotation. So kind of say, learn from the origin, where is that? Stop there. It won't make the constraint, but it will uh, build our, once we do put the constraint onto it, you can see this is fully defined. It will snap to it, make that into a center line. Now we've got some good work here. We can, this part's what we want. What about this stuff? Can't select it, there's no region. It's tempting to do various things here, you know, like close it up or whatever. The easy way to do it actually is to join and kind of build into where the body is. One of the big advantages of this intersect thing. So what say you? Well, now, for example, if I pull this up, it adjusts the cutouts. It's really great. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. So what we're trying to do here is get this so that we get the most elegant sketch possible that will give us the profiles that we need and not much extra. Right now it's completely underdefined. We'll deal with that as we go along. Finish the sketch. Show all the parts, maybe even on ice. And go to the top level. No, body's not showing. There we go. It's not bad. One of our problems here is we need to know what we are aiming for, right? So what's controlling this? Well, the fastener, the nut, sorry. 
so let's place a nut uh, right now minimum distance right now is seven between these two i'm just clicking on them just using this little little right to keep track seven and a half seven and a half ish so that's on the radius we're looking at about 15 ish 16. let's look for a 18 or 16 nut let's go up here nuts metric let's see what we can get before we get too carried away what's he got here he's got either Orlov either has a nut with a washer or a washered nut let's see what we can find it's all sorts of nuts oh there's some let's see here so let's try for an m <laughs> not that far m 16 17 there's 17s oh strange that's not what we're after m18 lots of nuts standard sort of class eight is probably all we need we don't need ultra high strength because we're just holding down a taper so there's lock nuts some things distorted threads nice stainless we don't need wing nuts might be interesting anyway we can see lots of stuff here lots of sort of options um let's try for what if we don't want an 18 what about a 16. flange nuts There's a class eight, 16, probably. That's the one we're gonna use. They're not too expensive. We don't know much about it, about the system. So let's just go for the mile, the standard steel. Uh, these seem the same. Oh, the pitch is different. So the one and a half pitch is more expensive to course. Again, we don't know what we need exactly. So let's go for the cheaper option, M16-2. Let's go look at the product detail for that. I'm gonna highlight this stuff and copy it in case I forget what we're at, M16 by two. Simple nut, cheap, like Porsche. But they are standards so they do conform to the standards probably fine let's go ahead and make sure it's a step with threads and a load looks about the right size it's rotated 90 degrees here but it seems to be the size they were using so let's say okay to that. Uh, we need to joint this because right now it's floating around. So let's go for joint G. Center that guy. And right now we, if we lock onto the bottom of this post, if we move that, the joint's gonna move. So what we want instead is actually the base, the, the, the plate, surprisingly. Um, right now I can't get in here. It starts picking the post again. So if I start here and press for me, command for you, control, it stays with this selection and just snaps. Perfect. Uh, it's upside down. No, it's not. And we can rotate this around if we wish. I'm gonna rotate it 90 for now. But we might be able to, we might need to move it back. Say okay. Looks like what we had. Turn on our analysis. Now we can start moving our sketch around. 
So what I'm doing here is actually just moving the sketch into place first. Getting it roughly correct. Right, I need to, I'm gonna make a big deal about this. This part here, we need to be below the minimum at least. If we are in here, we're gonna get an edge on the threading. So we wanna go below a little bit at least. Let's pull it back up. See here, we've already got a problem with the post protruding slightly past the plate. We do need to fix that. So we can see here, we can cut it away. Doesn't really matter as long as we've got enough meat here for this guy. So there's two options. We can either have it kind of straddling the base, uh, the intersection of the two, or we can have it entirely up and board. Uh, it's it's up to you largely. For us this time, let's go ahead here and straddle the interface. These two guys, that looks good. So what do we do now? Well, now we can just go ahead here and start dimensioning this guy up. So let's go ahead here and edit this profile. Profile. You can either click here or anywhere. Edit sketch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gonna this taper might make my sketch jerk around. So let's go ahead and do this easy standard stuff first. 16. And let's say from the origin of the system down to here is 58. This probably should be 45. And let's make it, well, let's actually, we don't know how to do that. This is our key thing here. So let's go ahead and dimension that first. The neck down, 13. The length of the thread at the base here. This is easier to, manage for a machinist to measure, say 16. Base of the shaft is 20. This taper, I do know, I measured this 10 degrees side to side, so five to the center. Ah, yeah, so we dug in there. Let's be careful here, pull it back out. Right, or we could pull back in. It's it's in a way up to you. Let's do that because it's a little more complicated. So next thing we have to decide is where uh, where the taper starts, perhaps. So let's go for a dimension here. Dimension there of eighteen. Where does that get us? That looks quite good. Five is way up there. Messy, just trying to see everything at once here. So to the base of our taper is 18. We might adjust some of these as we go along, so don't get too panicked if we do come back and shift these around a bit. So what I want to do is to mention this say uh, one but i also want to make sure it's outboard of the or kind of aligned with this so one way to do that is to do another dimension let it go driven because it's we're over defining it now say well yeah that's maybe we should use this to drive that so how do we do that right click on this guy get out of the tool first right so toggle driven, toggle driving. If we double click this now, we can pick one of these, so for example, a 13. And to say enter, what it will do is show us what our taper is. Sorry, our 
chamfer, make sure it's reasonable, one and a half, probably reasonable, and then 13, which is driven by the inside. So if we change this one, we change everything at once. Nice. That looks fine for now. You can also adjust these. So for example, we could say D9 plus four. Then if we move this, everything shifts around. Let's leave it like that for now. Still not fully defined. You can see the circle up here. So one thing, how do we dimension this? I don't want this to be exactly on here. So let's pull that slightly down. Got two things, the diameter and the position. We can, we can dimension it various ways. Oh, that's not the right one. Dimension this. Let's make that 10. And again, we can dimension from this origin. However, it's safer for a machinist later to be told, for example, it's 62 up. But how far down are we? So let's do an inspection dimension here. Because it's overdefined, should be no problem. Get the right one, there we go. It's predicting we're 0.2 millimeters below, maybe a little tight. What if we say 60? Get quite far down into the part, 61. Now we're about a millimeter in board. It's probably okay. We're missing, so let's escape. We have a cut here, that looks good. We have another profile here for adding, so cuts. Let's map it out what we're gonna do. Seems okay, finish the sketch. Now if you wanna be able to see and adjust this while it's open like this, right click, show dimensions. Nice. Still, let's go into the post here while we before we start doing some work. And if we want, we can hide everything by isolating. Let's go through this one at a time. Um, one of the big adventures of Fusion is you can uh, do revolves uh, and do lots of things at once. So for example, both of these guys can be revolved at once and joined. And then to repeat, whatever, just uh, right click at noon if you want to do it fast and fancy. Um, if you want to do it even faster, just drag up to noon profile. Sometimes the sketch will disappear if we just reuse it, use it again. Axis. This time it'll know it's doing a cut. This is actually what we want. Say OK. Nice. Now, our plate is not sorted out. Let's turn the plate on or unisolate the post. Up at the top level, we can see some things to come yet. We have to thread that stub. We have to probably fillet the inside edges of that. KT, hello there. And then this is not cut away yet. So if I hide my post, we can still see. Oh. So this is sticking in here. What is going on? The joint seems wrong. This area is very picky. Let's fix that while we're at it. The joint is wrong. Let's look for the joint. Rigid. Edit. Might be the, fir the first, sorry, when you're jointing in Fusion, you always want to select the unconstrained first. Plates for place OK. Let's reselect. What I did was pick this edge. What I need is this edge. That looks better. Flip it around again, say OK. Only moved it a tiny increment, but now it's correct. Perfect. OK, so now 
that all looks fine. We need to use the post to shape the plate. Best way to do that is with the combine tool. So at the top level, let's combine. Target body is what's going to be cut. That's our plate. What's the tool? The post. Right now it's join, cut. And if we do this, we're going to lose all of our good work. We want to keep the tool. Hide the post to see what happens. Oh, nice. It's a bit janky though. It's got some extra bits. Let's go into edit the post and delete these two parts. Oh, that's not right. We have to be a little bit more thorough here. Get rid of all the bits that are not what we want. Nice. Turn on the post. Perfect-ish. Not quite there yet. We've still got this extra gouging spot, this unhappy spot. Still active in the plate. Let's hide the nut. It's getting in the way now. Again, we've deleted the faces down here in the history. Next is a hole feature. Start the hole somewhere. Let's see, last time, whatever it was, you can see what's going on. Pull it. Should be able to snap onto the edge of the plate. Now, this is important. I don't want to cut the post. So turn off the post body one. Nice. Now, we can see what's going on here. So I'm kind of with a generic drill bit. Right, I'm gonna pick a better drill bit here, but now I'm cutting away material to give me the correct answer for my Taper rules from last couple of weeks ago. So let's get this right here. So the depths two, three, three. Three looks good. Diameter about twenty. Press enter there, maybe a little too fast. Let's put the fastener back on. And see where we are. Huh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Looks kind of good actually. So there we go. So that was a hole. Let's look at that again. It's a it's snapped to the middle of the face. It's standardized bit, normal, simple hole. Everything straightforward, angled base, bit like you would get with a just a rough drill bit, 20 millimeters, three millimeters into the surface, on the under surface of the plate. Nice. We are now conforming to our rule, taper rule, which is good. So everybody's happy, we believe. One thing left is to just simply thread this post. Now, where do we do that? Let's go to the top level. Look where we were doing the post work. That's the pink part here. Excuse me. So we've got two. If we highlight, we can see what's going on. My right, that's where we added. That's the cut, excuse me. Let's pull our history back there. So we know, keeping that in our pocket, the cuts and all the rest, we can just hide the plate. It's getting in the way right now. Let's go ahead here and taper the post, make sure it's active. Nice, you should see that everything else gets grayed out or x-rayed. If it gets in the way for a moment, you can hide it. So we'll trigger the thread. Now you think, oh, hold on. What was that thread of that guy? Let's change this property. I think. There we go. I copy pasted that way back. Should have did this earlier. M16 by two. 
that was the less expensive option there we go 16 by 2 let's go ahead and do that now thread uh, sometimes you can pick some stuff that's there hide that again keep in mind analysis is turned on let's have a look at it modeled Thread's working well. It's stepped in from a neck. Oh, the neck steps in. That's good. Let's see here. Turn on the fastener again. Slightly off kilter, but looks about the same. 16 by 2. What's this do? That makes it slightly bigger. Standard is to stick with 6G. So this is our. There's more material condition here, higher material condition. Let's go for the lower material condition. Right hand, everything is okay. You can remember size if you're doing this multiple times. Full length is fine, say okay. You can hide that sketch, it's getting in the way. Where's our sketch? Sketch, good, sketch, good. There we go. And unisolate, unisolate the post. Or isolate, then re isolate <laughs> Just turn stuff on. Good lord, man. This is not a big deal. It's the same thread designation. But let's have a look and see if we can get this joint to uh, match up our threads here. Right click, edit joint. Go. Oh no, it goes out of kilter. I'm just going to move it, say minus 45, say OK. How do we move this without being able to see because of the history? Let's go all the way to the end here. So we've got all this history going on. Our thread's out of kilter. Do I care? No. Should I fix it? Yeah, maybe. Let's go for change parameters. Now, once we pull it, we should find that we have an easier time finding it. There it is, rigid one. There's that 45. Let's see if we can change this. What if we go to zero? No, that's it. What about 90? Almost there. What about 105? 120. Perfect. It is slightly overlapping. Uh, so either, oh, it's not quite right either. Let's go for change parameters again. 130, because we're being picky. There we go. There is a slight overlap here that you'll notice, maybe. Uh, it might be a shift in standard that McMaster Car is playing with. Uh, it might be our standard is slightly different. We're using M, the same ANSI M, or DIN M. So the thing, tiny things. This, Usual answer is this will most likely fit, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Um, we are going to go ahead here and get a little bit even more picky. I don't know why I've suddenly lost my comment bar. Um, how would we model this exactly if we want to do, for example, a rendering? Let's turn off our analysis. This is what we get. The, the McMaster car fasteners tend to be quite good modeling wise, so we can hide that. See here that we've got some jankiness. So first we need to put a fillet for KT here. Let's go ahead and calculate that. I'm oh, sorry, model that, but first we need to make sure we're in the post part. So fillet, yeah, if it's triggering fillets, we can pick either edges or faces. Start started by just pulling very gently not too crazy 0.5 say it's 0.5 millimeters seems to work and if we want we can add more fillets around you never do around but for example if we wanted more fillets up in here we could just add them this is okay say okay to that it's nice so 
if we want to also fix this for some reason, we want to model this correctly. You can actually highlight these extraneous faces. No tapping operation would ever generate this face. It would take it away as it went in. Press delete. This is quite hard for it to calculate, so patience. You can see here now we have a properly modeled beginning of thread. What about the top here? So we've got the work and let's edit that. And if we add one, plates get in the way. Hide that. What about that guy? Uh, that doesn't work. So that's about the limit of what we would normally do. So just undo that. There we go. There's our part of modeled up. Uh, as per Orlov figure 255E6. Let's make sure we're not missing anything here. along with some of our own special improvements. Again, that depends where you work. Uh, they may or may not be worried about stuff like this, but if we're gonna to conform to our taper rule, we should uh, make sure that we've got that right. Let's turn our analysis off. Our last stage here is just to see what we're measuring. So let's have a look. Properties. Okay, I always lose it somehow. Here it is, pick the whole thing. Let's have a look. Volume is what we're after here. I'm just gonna write this down. So we're gonna be looking for some crazy number, 8,504. Nope, 85,046, sorry. 0.1-ish. We'll give you a range, of course. So plus or minus a bit, but that's what we're gonna be aiming for, a volume of the whole assembly. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Over to you. Uh, well, you've been following along anyway. Hopefully that was worthwhile. Uh, learn some stuff. Uh, hopefully useful things for work. Thanks for watching.